know God, love God, and serve God. We need to know who we are, love one another, and serve one another. Be wielding the sword of the Word of God like Jesus Christ did when He was in the wilderness and the devil came to take Him out. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, friends and family. It's such a privilege for me to be able to bring the Word of God to you. I want you to come with me now as we go into one of our services. I pray that God would be glorified and that lives would be changed. I also would like to invite you to come to one of our services and enjoy it live. And let, let this church reach out to you and touch you in a special way. I'll see you at the end of this service. Go with me to the book of Philippians and go to chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Anoint me today. Anoint every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. May your Holy Spirit come in and teach us, lead us, and guide us into all the truth, Lord God. Set us free by the power of your word today and the power of your spirit I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at verse 10 of chapter 3 of the book of Philippians. That you may know Him. It starts off, we need to know Jesus. Amen. A personal relationship with Him. That you may know Him and the power of His resurrection. How, how many of you believe Jesus is alive? Amen. Now there's power in that resurrection and it's not just the past resurrection. God wants to resurrect everything in our lives. We, he, we need to know Him now and the power of His resurrection right now. We need life in every part of us, every area. We want the resurrection power of God to touch us and change us. And the fellowship of His suffering. We don't talk a lot about that part, do we? Because sometimes, like, like our brother said, we know the devil is attacking us. And John 10.10 10 says the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to, to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. Amen. So as we're going through this world, we suffer things. You know, we sang a song and it says that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But we're going to praise Him anyway. We're going to bless Him anyway. Do y'all know that the heathens can praise the Lord? A sinner can praise the Lord. People get, you know, arrested and they put in prison and, and there they are and they, they're trying to praise God because they heard one place where Peter praised them and he got out of prison and they're in there trying to praise God. But they're not a worshiper, they're just praising God. How many know the trees praise God? The stars praise God. The animals praise God. The birds sing a song and they're praising God. We all can praise God, but worship is a whole different thing. Because when things are going bad and you still say, I love you, Lord, and it doesn't matter if it comes, like, comes out like I want, I'm going to serve you anyway, I'm going to praise you anyway, I'm going to lift you up anyway, then you're a worshiper. That's because you know there's nowhere else to go. He is the one that has life. That's why earlier I said, don't ever bow down to a man or to a statue or to... Only God is worthy of that kind of worship. Amen. Now, you know, you can praise your children. You can even praise me and say, that was a great sermon. Good job, Pastor. You, and that's all praise, but you don't worship me. Amen. In the scripture, every time someone bowed down to Peter or to one of the apostles or to another man, he said, get up, don't do that. No, worship God. Amen. So we need to know the power of His resurrection, but the fellowship of His suffering. There's going to be some hard times in this earth. And sometimes I think God allows the hard times to bring us to the place where we're dependent upon Him. What's going to happen in America in the next 20 years? You don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. We hope for the best. We pray for the best. We believe for the best. But you don't know what's going to happen. Right. 
and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering. It says, being conformed to His death. Amen? We've got to take up the cross and follow Him. We've got to be willing to do what He did. You know, as a disciple, the Word of God tells us that all of us have the same goal. And that's to be like Jesus. How many of y'all want to be like Jesus? Now, see, if you've got a religious picture of Jesus, you say, no, I don't want to be like that because that means I don't get married, I wear a robe, and I carry a cross, and I walk around, and I don't shave, and I don't have a place to live, and all that. And that's what some people think that being like Jesus is. And so whenever I say, do you want to be like Jesus, some of you say, I'm not sure if I want to be like Jesus because we got the wrong image of Jesus. But our goal, every one of you here today, your goal as a Christian is to be like Jesus, to be conformed to, be conformed to the image of God's dear Son. And so that's what he's talking about here, being conformed even to his death. If by any means we may obtain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that we have already obtained or am already perfect, is anybody in here already perfect? He says, but I press on. See, I'm, I haven't obtained it all yet. I'm not already perfect, but guess what? I'm going to press on. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep pressing on to what? Be like Jesus. To love like Jesus. To have the character of Jesus. The integrity of Jesus. The love of Jesus in my heart. I press on that I may lay hold for that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. If you're here today and you're born again and you're a child of God, you know what that means? Jesus Christ has laid a hold of you. We think we just kind of decided. Well, yes, we had to surrender to that call, but He's laid a hold of you and I want to know why He laid a hold of me. You know, the Bible says you didn't choose him, he chose you. Now, that's powerful. We think we choose Jesus, but Jesus chooses us, and then we say yes or no when he chooses us. That I may lay hold for that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Why did you get a hold of me, God? I want to know that. I want to lay hold of why you laid hold of me. Why am I here? Say that. Why am I here? How many of y'all know why you're here? What, what is your outcome? What, 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 what have you decided today is the outcome of your day or your coming to church today? Did you even think about it or you just got up and got into the routine? You're just doing your religious duty. You're going to church and then you're going to go home and do what you normally do. Or are you actually looking for the outcome of, of God's purpose and plan for your life? See, those of you who came in here with expectation will leave here with something. You know, when I go to visit somebody, I should think about what the outcome of my visit's going to be before I even go, because if I do that, I'll have more of a chance of getting the outcome that I desire. Amen. If you're a salesman, what's your outcome? To sell whatever it is you're selling. Now, if you think you're a salesman means you just visit with somebody and give them coffee and you don't have to sell what you're selling, you're not going to sell anything. All you're going to do is give them some coffee. You got to decide your outcome from the beginning. Young man, young lady, why do you date or court someone? What are you looking for? Are you looking for a husband and a wife? Or are you looking for a sexual encounter? What is the outcome? What, what are you focused on? Now, your outcome needs to line up with what? The will of God, the Word of God. And so you need to learn the Word of God. And when you know the Word of God, then you can pursue the will of God for your life. And you can accomplish that outcome that God has for you. Every one of you has a destiny. And that destiny is to be like Jesus. Now, if you don't want to be like Jesus, you just soon quit. Because being a Christian is wanting to be like your Lord. Wanting to be like your Savior. But that doesn't mean that you have to, you know, uh, wear a robe and walk around in sandals 
and never shave or whatever. It means that as you go, you should love, show joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, living with the attributes and character and nature of Jesus Christ in your life everywhere you go. Now, I'm, I'm still uh, need some help. Anybody else need some help with some of those things? Look at verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself, and this is the Apostle Paul, to have apprehended. But one thing I do. Say one thing. This is what Miss Janice was saying. This is the one thing Paul says that he does. Forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind. Reaching forward. Say reaching forward. How many of y'all are reaching forward? Now you know what? It, to reach forward, it takes energy. It takes power. Now we love to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. But the power of the Holy Spirit is to give you the energy to keep going, to reach forward. To do the will of God. To be a doer of the Word of God. It's not some kind of magical power that we just use for the healing of the sick or trying to make miracles happen and all that. The greatest miracle is to forget the things that are past, get born again, have a new life, reach ahead for those things that God has for you. And with the energy and the life that God has given you, you move ahead. Some of y'all are stuck in your life. You're stuck in your relationship with your, your wife or your husband. Where's that passion again? You're just going about your days and, and just whatever will be, will be. You know the song, Que Sera, Sera, whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours, you see. How stupid of a song is that? It sounds real good, but it's not true. Now I'll tell you, if you do not engage the energy, the power, the life that God has given you in the pursuit of His calling for your life, you will never accomplish it. If you don't engage the power, your energy, to have a better marriage, you won't have a better marriage. How I many you know it takes work to, to have a good marriage? You've got to court that woman. You've got to take a little energy sometimes and get a flower for her. You've got to tell her something nice. I see some elbows flying in there. Getting somewhere now. And it's the same thing. For, for the wife, you've got to use energy. You, you've got to be excited about your spouse. Listen, I, I do a lot of counseling with people. And you know, here's one of the complaints you get. Well, after working all day, after I've been working all day, or, you know, man or woman, and they get home, she's expecting this and he's expecting that, and I'm dead tired because I've been working all day and I don't feel like I need to do anything. I just want to rest. And you're not giving any energy to bring in passion into your relationship. And guess what's going to happen with that relationship? It takes energy. Now, if your energy level is down, you need to get it up. What drains us of our energy? Worry, fear, pursuing the things of the world more than the things of God. Amen? Not exercising, not eating right. Oh, so now you're going meddling, Pastor. But you, do, you, do you understand that there's more to energy than just praying? Now, we need to pray, but you got to get up from your knees and do something. If you're going to get to Chicago, it's going to take some energy to get there. How many of y'all like to take a trip to New York City? That would be nice. Take a trip to Rome. I'm going to tell you, it's going to take some energy to get to Rome. Amen. Yeah, you go to Guatemala and you say, boy, I want to go see the top of that, uh, that volcano. It's going to take some energy to get to the top of that volcano, I can tell you right now, because I didn't make it all the way. See, we have a lot of things we want in life, but we do not engage our entire being to accomplishing it. If I want something, I've got to actually do something to get it. Y'all know what the uh, uh, definition of insanity is? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. We're going to live the way we've always lived, but we expect that our life is going to end up different. 
Amen. So if you want a different tomorrow, you got to do something different right now. You got to change it right now. But if you're taking notes, the first thing you need to do, and whatever you do, is dis- decide what the outcome is going to be in what you're doing. What are you wanting out of what you're fixing to do? Because that's a goal. That's, that, that means you're setting a goal. Amen. Then you have to actually engage your energy. You have to take action. Say take action. So number one, figure out your, your outcome. Number two, you've got to take action. Now that's where most of us fail. We've got a lot of dreams, but nobody takes action to fulfill those dreams. How many of y'all would like to have your garage clean? Your closet clean? Uh oh. So you know that that's a goal, that's something you want. Amen? So one day you got to get up and say, the outcome of my day is going to be that that garage is going to be clean. Then you go inside and you fix yourself a cup of coffee and you wait for the angels to go clean it. You got to put some action into it. You got to put some energy into it. Amen? Let me finish reading this. This one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward, I got to set some new goals for those things which are ahead. God has a future for you. Amen? I press towards the goal. Whatever goal you you have set for your life, you need to press towards it. Now, y'all don't wait until New Year's Eve to say, well, I'm going to, you know, do all of my New Year's resolutions. I'm I'm going to set my goal to lose my weight and all that. Start today. Set some goals today. And then move towards those goals. Now, to move towards some goals, you got to move away from some other things. Amen? Amen? You know, if you, if you plan on getting in better shape, you've got to move away from the cakes and the sweets. And the, and... <laughs> Hallelujah. Pressing. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. Go with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 4. You know, this, this book right here is, is the manual for life. This is the manual for success right here. Amen. Wednesday night I talked about our coach. And I have this written down. I believe no matter how successful you are, we all need a personal coach to encourage us, to challenge us, and to remind us to live up to our potential. I'm going to read that again. I believe that no matter how successful we are, we all need a personal coach to encourage us, to challenge us, and to remind us to live up to our potential. Our capacity is absolutely incredible of what, God, what we can do as sons and daughters of God. Do y'all realize that? It's incredible what you can actually produce. I wrote this down. What people do is different from actually what they can do. Your potential. What you're doing is not even close to what you can do. You know, every one of you men in here probably could bench press 250 pounds. But you might have to work up to it. Some of y'all are already there. You might could do it today. But do you know that the potential is there for you to be able to do it? But you've got to actually move towards that if you want to do that. And that's in every area of your life, anything. Our potential as sons and daughters of God is absolutely amazing what we can actually do. And we limit ourselves by our belief system. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, does that mean all things or just some things? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'll get to Proverbs 4. Look at verse 20. It says, My son... Give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. 
Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Do y'all see what the Word of God is for us? That's where we find our success, but you've got to keep it before your eyes. Then it says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Where does life come from? Inside. But you've got to fill your heart with the Word. Then let that Word begin to come out of your mouth. I've been teaching about, about how we've got to take control of our thought life. Amen? Then we've got to set our dreams and visions in line with God. Then we've got to believe right and speak right. If we want to have what God has for us. Now listen to what he says. Put away from you a deceitful mouth. How many know you got to control this tongue right here? It gets us in trouble. You ever meet people that all they talk about is negative things? Maybe it's you. Maybe you meet that person in the mirror in the morning. It says, and put perverse lips far from you. See, one of the greatest revelations I learned as a Christian is the power of my words. You know, whenever you go home and you start saying all kind of negative things to your spouse, it's not going to go very well with you that evening. But if you speak encouraging words, it's going to go better, won't it? When you walk in the house and, you, and, and you've been working all day and she's been there all day and you say, what, you've been doing nothing all day? Uh-oh. And you don't even notice that supper's cooking. That the clothes have been washed. You better watch what you say. It says, let your eyes look straight ahead. And your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet. How many of y'all take time to think about where you're going? And let all your ways be established. Now, the only way to establish your ways is to know that the path that you're taking is God's will for your life. His word is what? A lamp into my feet, a light into my path. I need to know what the will of God is for my life. Do not turn to the right hand or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. So whenever you find yourself in the wrong place, what you're supposed to do? Adjust. Remove yourself from that evil. You know, Wednesday night I talked about uh, an airplane flight. You know that whenever a plane takes off like they're going to fly, let's say, to Chicago from New Orleans, that 95% of the time that that plane is off course, the winds and the, the weather and the other traffic, they have to turn here, turn there. But you know what? They actually land in Chicago at the airport. How do they do that? They adjust as they're on the journey. Now, as we're on our journey and things buffet us and things come against us and, 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 and the winds and the storms of life come and try to knock, off, knock us off course, what are we supposed to do? Adjust. Because we have a destination. And what is that destination? To be like Jesus. Now, this doesn't just work that. If you want to have a business, you've got to set a goal. And you've got to move towards that goal. And when things begin to buffet that, you're supposed to adjust and get to where God wants you to go. It works in every area of your life. Amen? Go with me to uh, Joshua chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. Look with me at verse 7. One of the things that keeps us from getting to where we're wanting to go is fear. It will, it will stagnate you. It will stop you. Now listen to what Joshua says in Joshua chapter 1. Let's start with verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Now this is the word of the Lord coming to Joshua. For to the people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do. Now underline that in your Bible. You need to observe to do. You've got to pay attention, observe to put the Word of God into action. And to do that, you've got to be strong and you've got to be courageous. You've got to be bold. Amen? He says, observe to do according to all the law of Moses, my servant, has commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, 
that you may prosper wherever you go. Now listen to verse 8, because this is the scripture of, of success right here. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. How many of y'all take this and start and read it out loud and speak it and fill your mouth with it? Say things like, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. All that rise up against me shall be condemned. By his stripes I'm healed. He sent his word and healed me and delivered me out of all my trouble. And I fill my mouth with the word of God. And that word is a lamp into my feet. It's a light into my path. And when the circumstances of life come, what do I do? I put that word in my mouth. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night. Now, day and night means all the time, doesn't it? Now, how many of y'all take that much time to meditate on the Word of God? To stop and think about what God's plan is for your life. What does the Word actually say? And then he says it again, that you may observe. Now, how many of us pay that much attention to what's going on in our lives? Observe to do. There it is. I would underline it again right there. God has written this that we may look into it so that we may become doers of the Word. That's the power of God. Putting this into action is what God wants us to do. And what is the two commandments that he says puts all of this into, in, into action? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and to love one another. That you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So there he goes again saying you've got to have courage. You've got to be strong. To be a doer of the word, you've got to get rid of the fear and embrace the will of God for your life. Amen? Y'all doing all right today? Y'all getting something out of this? Now we want to, I want to, I want to get to this one point right here. If you don't focus your life on the will of God and look for the will of God for your life, you'll never find it. You've got to seek Him like we were singing. Then you've got to set goals. You've got, you've got to say, what do I want? Then you've got to make plans. How many of y'all ever sit down and write out some plans for your day? Or plans for your life? Then you've got to take actions to accomplish those plans. And then you need to measure it to see if you're getting results. And that's my prayer. I pray that, that we would observe to see if we're actually getting the results in our life that God wants us to get. And whenever you see that you're not getting the right results, you need to do what? Make adjustments. And I talked about this Wednesday night. A little adjustment makes a big difference. Amen? Just a little adjustment. Anybody in here plays golf? You know, it's the little adjustments you make when you hit that golf ball that makes it go straight or not. Because you could just be a little bit off right here and it's going to end up about 50 yards off. So our little adjustments, and I described it Wednesday night. I said, if I wanted to go to that door and I started to go and something bumped me off course and I didn't adjust to get back on course, I would have a hard time getting to that door, wouldn't I? Even though it was just a little something that bumped me. Now, as Christians... We need to pay attention, and I, I don't think we pay enough attention to see if what we're doing is actually bearing fruit, if it's producing the results that God wants. And we don't make the adjustments quick enough, and we find ourselves way over there when we should be over here. Jacob, you can come forward. But the most important adjustment anybody needs to make is, first of all, to give your life to Jesus Christ. Now, that's a major adjustment, isn't it? 
that's turning your life over from darkness to light. Coming out of the kingdom of darkness, coming into the kingdom of God's dear son. God loves you. And wherever you are, I want you to know that you can forget those things that are behind. And press on for those things that are ahead. So I, I could demonstrate something for you right now. If I'd get Jim and Tony up and I'd say, y'all stand right there and keep me from getting to that door. You know, they could keep me from getting to that door if I wouldn't give all of my energy. But I tell you, if I would put all of my heart into getting to that door, those two men are going to have a hard time stopping me from getting to that door. And they're going to hit me. They're going to grab me. They're going to try to hold me back. And what am I going to do? I'm going to continue to adjust, to turn, to spin, to fight, to do whatever i got to do to get to the destination that I know I'm supposed to get to. But how many of us start this journey? And we know we need to get to the door. And a couple of little devils buffet us and we stop. Somebody offends us and we stop. Something goes wrong and we stop. And then we, we sit in our mess. We, we just keep looking back and we do the blame game. You know what I'm talking about? If it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for this, I would be able... No, just forget those things that are behind and press for the goal. Go for it. But it's going to take your energy. Power. Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. That power that God wants to give you is the ability to do what He's called you to do. Now, I've lived in this Christian life long enough to know that once you start the journey, there's exciting times and then there's battles. Amen? Amen? And you wonder, you say, Lord, I, I've, I've been going to church, I've been paying my tithe, why am I in the hospital? Why am I sick? Why is this happening to me? What, what's going on? Why are my children acting up? And, and, and we sometimes get offended at God or offended at the church or offended at something, and we stop. Don't stop. Don't quit. Engage your passion like never before. And run the race that is said before you. Wouldn't it be interesting to see what would happen if they would get up, try to stop me, and I'd get there? It'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? It would. But we don't see it like that. We don't see it as a challenge. Sometimes we just look too much at the negative instead of looking at the positive things that God has for us. When something bad happens, let me ask you, do y'all look for the opportunity that is presented in the problem? Or do you just look at the problem? Because I believe with every problem, God makes a way of escape. With every temptation, God wants to give you the strength to overcome it. And it might not end up the way you want, but God's going to end up making you what He wants out, out of you through it.